Have you ever heard of a single engineering project so massive, so colossal, that its sheer weight actually changed the planet? A structure so heavy, it slowed down the Earth's rotation, even if just by a fraction of a second? That is not science fiction. It is the reality of the Three Gorges Dam, built across the mighty Yangtze River in China's Hubei province. This is the largest power-producing structure on Earth. Its main wall stretches for a staggering 2.3 kilometers and stands 185 meters tall, roughly the height of a 60-story skyscraper. Its total installed power capacity is a mind-blowing 22,500 megawatts, an output that surpasses the annual consumption of more than 150 countries of the world. If we compare it to America's iconic Hoover Dam, the Three Gorges Dam is a monument built with the benefit of decades of modern technology. Yet both dams, the Hoover Dam, built in the 1930s, and the Three Gorges Dam, built in the 21st century, represent humanity's endless ambition to conquer nature. But here is the thing. Not everyone sees the Three Gorges Dam as a triumph. Some environmentalists call it a crime against nature, arguing that such a project disrupts ecosystems, displaces millions, and permanently alters the landscape. Others question why China needed such a colossal hydroelectric project in an age dominated by clean, decentralized energy like solar and wind. So, was this dam truly necessary? Or was it simply a statement, the ultimate monument to human power? To understand this debate, we must rewind the story to the very beginning. The Yangtze River is more than just water. It is the lifeline of China. As the third longest river in the world, flowing from the Tibetan highlands all the way to the East China Sea, it has been the heart of Chinese civilization for thousands of years, providing water, food, and trade. But it has also carried destruction. Throughout history, the Yangtze has unleashed catastrophic floods, wiping out entire towns and killing millions. The necessity of controlling this recurring disaster began to shape the ambition of Chinese leaders long before the modern era. Believe it or not, the first idea for a massive dam here came more than a century ago, in 1919. The Chinese revolutionary leader Sun Yat-sen, the founder of modern China, proposed the giant dam in his book The International Development of China, believing it could prevent flooding and generate electricity for the entire nation. The idea lay dormant until 1931, when nature struck again. A catastrophic flood hit the lower Yangtze region, becoming one of the deadliest disasters in human history. After this, China's then-leader Chiang Kai-shek revisited Sun Yat-sen's vision, and initial studies began in 1932. This effort was quickly derailed by the Japanese invasion in 1937 and the subsequent years of war. The idea resurfaced briefly during World War II with American involvement. In 1944, J.L. Savage, an American dam expert from the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation, was invited to China. He drafted preliminary designs, and by 1946, a formal contract was signed with the U.S. to design the dam, with dozens of Chinese engineers sent to America for training. Yet, economic collapse and the raging civil war between Chiang Kai-shek's government and Mao Zedong's communist forces were too great an obstacle. In 1947, the plan was abandoned at least for the time being. After Mao Zedong came to power in 1949, the necessity of the dam became tragically clear in 1954 when the Yangtze flooded again, affecting 20 million people and killing over 30,000. The newly formed communist government, this time with technical support from the Soviet Union, revived the project. Formal planning began in 1955. While Mao initially supported the project, intense technical and political debates soon followed. Engineers like Lin Yishan proposed a massive structure primarily for flood control, while others argued for a smaller dam. Despite growing opposition during the short-lived Hundred Flowers movement, the Communist Party's Central Committee approved the project in 1956. However, it was not yet a top priority. The dam only re-emerged in the 1980s as China began its massive economic modernization. The surging demand for electricity made the hydroelectric project viable once again. A new feasibility study was conducted. And in 1992, after decades of debate, the project was officially approved by the National People's Congress. Crucially, 
the vote was far from unanimous. Nearly one-third of the Congress voted against it or abstained, reflecting the project's deep-seated controversy. Construction preparations began in 1993, and the formal groundbreaking took place in 1994, marking the start of the most ambitious engineering feat in modern history. The construction, managed by the China Three Gorges Corporation, was executed in two main phases, involving temporary cofferdams to keep the work sites dry while maintaining river flow and shipping access. Sophisticated two-way ship locks were simultaneously excavated and built. The project reached its first major milestone in 2003. With the completion of the first phase, 14 massive turbines were installed and began generating electricity. The second phase finished in 2006, bringing the main wall to completion. By 2012, the dam was fully operational, producing electricity at its full capacity. Today, the Three Gorges Dam is equipped with 34 massive turbines, generating 22,500 megawatts of electricity, the highest output of any hydroelectric project in the world, far surpassing the Itaipu Dam on the Brazil-Paraguay border. The dam's reservoir holds up to 39 billion cubic meters of water, covering an area of about 1,100 square kilometers, and ranking among the world's largest in capacity, navigation along the Yangtze was permanently transformed. The dam features a sophisticated five-step two-way shiplock system that allows massive vessels up to 10,000 tons to pass through in about four hours. Later, in 2015, Chinese engineers added a hydraulic ship lift that can raise or lower smaller vessels between the river and the reservoir in just 40 minutes. A remarkable feat of modern engineering. The sheer scale came at a financial cost. Initial estimates of 22 billion US dollars ballooned to a final cost of about $37 billion. However, the dam generates around $8 billion worth of electricity each year, meaning it has already recovered its original construction cost in purely financial terms. Yet, the true cost remains controversial. Around 1.3 million people were displaced as their towns, villages, and farmlands were submerged. Nearly 1,500 historic and archaeological sites were lost forever. The project has been heavily criticized for its social and environmental impact, particularly due to the massive resettlement and the long-term impact on local ecosystems, including fears about increased landslides and seismic risks. The Chinese government, however, insists that the long-term benefits are essential for the nation's survival and progress. By generating clean, renewable power, the dam reduces China's annual coal consumption by around 50 million tons, significantly reducing carbon emissions and fighting regional pollution. Its flood control function has saved billions of dollars by preventing catastrophic floods that historically plagued the Yangtze Basin. In 2020, during the region's worst flooding in six decades, the dam held back over 30 billion cubic meters of water, preventing an estimated $7.7 .7 billion in economic losses downstream and saving major cities from devastating inundation. China's deep-rooted expertise in hydraulic engineering stretches back to antiquity. This legacy is evidenced by projects like the Kibei Dam, built in Anhui province around 598 BC. Just three centuries later, around 256 BC, the remarkable Dujingyan Dam and its innovative irrigation system were constructed. A testament to ancient ingenuity, this system remains functional today. Given the monsoonal hydrologic regime of Chinese rivers, characterized by destructive seasonal floods, early engineers also focused on developing massive flood control systems, such as the Jingjiang Levee on the Yangtze River, which was started as early as 345 BC. This ancient ambition culminated in works like the Grand Canal, begun around 486 BC, which still connects Hangzhou with Beijing and remains the longest man-made waterway in the world. Despite this impressive background, dam construction in modern times was surprisingly limited. By 1949, the year the People's Republic was founded, there were only 22 large dams in service nationwide, generating a modest installed hydropower capacity of just 163 megawatts. Following the liberation, everything changed. 
The development of water resources, centrally focused on the construction of large dams, became a first-order policy to fuel the nation's expected fast economic growth in the post-war era. The government viewed dams not merely as infrastructure, but as powerful symbols of modernization and control over nature. This pivot resulted in one of the most intense dam-building sprees in human history. To date, the country has constructed more than 22,000 large dams and over 85,000 dams in total, meaning nearly half of all the world's dams are now located within China. For reference, the International Commission on Large Dams defines a large dam as one with a height greater than 15 meters, or a dam with a shorter height but a reservoir volume exceeding 3 million cubic meters. When assessing why China committed to the colossal Three Gorges Dam, instead of relying on alternatives like solar or wind power, the answer is rooted in a critical convergence of timing, transportation, and flood control. First, in the 1990s and early 2000s when construction began, solar and wind power were not yet affordable or scalable, making hydropower the most reliable and readily available renewable option to meet China's rapidly growing electricity demands. Second, the dam fundamentally transformed the Yangtze River into a high-capacity trade superhighway, achieved through several key engineering improvements. The dam raises and stabilizes water levels upstream for safer, year-round navigation, and it incorporates a sophisticated two-lane, five-stage shiplock system and a vertical ship lift that drastically speeds up transit for 10,000-ton vessels, boosting the river's cargo capacity tenfold and cutting transportation costs by up to 37%. Third, and perhaps most crucially, a primary purpose was flood control to mitigate the catastrophic seasonal floods that historically plagued the Yangtze Basin. Since 2003, the dam has provided unprecedented protection. During its most significant test in the record-breaking 2020 floods, the dam intercepted massive flood peaks, holding back over 30 billion cubic meters of water an action that officially prevented an estimated 7.7 .7 billion U.S. dollars in direct economic losses and protected major downstream cities like Wuhan, Nanjing, and Shanghai from severe inundation. In sum, the Three Gorges Dam was conceived as an integrated, massive-scale solution. A single project designed to guarantee stable power, create an industrial backbone through efficient transport, and secure the safety of millions of lives simultaneously. And finally, that fascinating detail. The reservoir's colossal weight, according to NASA scientists, has actually slowed down Earth's rotation. The change is minuscule, a fraction of a millisecond, but it is astonishing proof that the Three Gorges Dam is not just an engineering project. It is a force that has altered the planet itself, simultaneously reshaping China's energy system, transportation network, and flood defense all at once. So, when you consider the millions displaced against the lives saved from floods, the natural habitats lost against the massive reduction in coal use, how do you weigh the true cost of the Three Gorges Dam? Is it a monument to human arrogance or a necessary step toward a safer, more modern China? We want to hear your thoughts. Share your perspective on the Three Gorges Dam. Is it a triumph of engineering or a crime against nature? In the comments below. And if you found this deep dive into one of the world's most controversial structures fascinating, please like, share, and subscribe for more stories that explore the intersection of history, power, and massive human ambition.